respected sessions chair mr karuna karan dr sunny anand dr sundar kamath esteemed co-panelists dear participants all of the protocols observed a very good day to you all as secretary general of audio it gives me an immense pleasure to greet you on behalf of 31 member countries and to address you on the occasion of the fifth ideal village conference with the theme sustainability and the pandemic ensuring human and environmental well-being at this very prestigious university my sincere thanks go to all the organizers for impeccably arranging this platform for us it is gratifying to note that an array of initiatives are ongoing to address village sustainability issues especially when we have a clarion call to review our production distribution and consumption patterns as well as our models while implementing sdgs and the agenda 2063 for africa ladies and gentlemen for sustainable livelihood we have to enhance cooperation and have a systemic approach let's go through a few slides i prepared for you we know that all the world throughout the world we are undergoing the severe covid-19 pandemic the impact is very serious this has crimped and crippled economies it has plummeted socio economic indicators pushed the whole world into recession many countries are still agrarian in nature and predominantly characterized by marginal and small holders very often constrained by low quality inputs lack of access to innovative technologies and poor market linkages even pre pandemic they were already in precarious situation struggling to attain food security and economic development some of them were then having unfinished agendas of mdgs many of them are also off track when we consider the sdgs the pandemic has compounded the existing problems by breaking down the then prevailing supply and value change and causing serious disruptions in our markets most hit and disproportionately suffering are the villages especially in africa and asia and all the ldcs the rural dwellers the daily wages women children without financial cushions they are seriously impacted let's see where most of the rural poor are living in this world they are mostly in the region of east asia south asia and sub saharan africa we've got certain data justifying why we should be focusing on these two continent and these two regions as i said 78% of the world poorest region live in rural areas and most of them are in these two regions evidence continue to point to a rise in world hunger in the recent years and now we will be having new figures and new data showing that it will be quite difficult to eradicate hunger by 2030 the real danger is not giving due consideration to village development and agricultural development in africa and asia where the population is about 76.7 of the world as given by the world dometers here we see in the next slide so the whole population of asia and africa is 76.7% livelihood and sustainability these are humanitarian issues very often we are flummoxed by a series the farago of jumble amounts of agenda policies rhetorics programs schemes and reports from various institution on the simple humanitarian issues like livelihood and sustainability 
we ask ourselves, has humanity failed in terms of economic system or in terms of human values? Can't we partner to guarantee basic needs and livelihood to every human being? At the African Asian Rural Development Organization, we are a rural-centric organization established since 1962. We are also one of the very first example of South-South cooperation. Our mandate is to develop understanding our members so that they can understand the problems and explore the possibility of having collective actions, cooperative action for the region. It really provides an important platform for our member countries to realize their own developmental goals. Our major areas of concerns are poverty alleviation, sustainable agricultural development, integrated rural development, empowerment of rural people, especially women, and environment and climate change in the context of agriculture and rural development. We've got a total membership of 33. Among that, we've got 31 governments and two associate members from Africa and Asia. You can see in the slides, most uh, of the African countries are represented there. And then we've got Asian countries also. We are operating from Delhi, from India, which is our esteemed member, hosting the Secretariat. And from this Secretariat headquarters, we are also having six regional offices, three in Asia and three in Africa. Our focus is mainly on eight specific SDG goals as presented and elucidated on the slide. Our key areas of operation are human resource development, where we try to provide some 400 scholarships per year for medium term, short term and long term courses. We do also do some financing of development pilot projects up to a maximum of 50,000 US dollars per project with the government willing to participate in such projects. These projects mainly are, are meant for transfer of technology for agricultural and rural development, development of physical and social infrastructure, promotion of off-farm micro enterprises, micro credit for income generating activities and capacity building. We have so far supported more than 69 projects in 22 member countries. Odoo is a link operation, a, a link organization which operates through centers of excellences. We've got 26 such centers of excellences in 11 countries, namely Bangladesh, Egypt, India, Malaysia, Morocco, Nigeria, Pakistan, Philippines, uh, Taiwan, and Zambia. The experience at Odoo has given us a lot of lessons to learn. Especially we know what is the cry of the day. It is a dire need to galvanize South-South and Triangular Initiative to achieve inclusive and sustainable development in rural economies. We have to speedily transfer appropriate knowledge, know-how and technology towards increasing livelihood and transforming rural areas in both continents. There is also a dire need for promotion of low-cost rural technologies in Africa and Asian region. We've got a series of initiatives we've done on the past, especially to ensure rural development through technology, technology transfer, and technology adaptation. Since uh, 1986, we've run, with the collaboration of the government of India, an international workshop on energy, appropriate technology, and rural reconstruction. Again, in 2003, we've been running an international workshop on agricultural technology transfer and its consequences with the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan. We've also had uh, another workshop in 2007 on role of information technology in rural development. We've got a other series of initiatives undertaken with our centers of excellence. We've been running uh, programs on information communication technology for rural development, promotion of entrepreneurship through transfer of technology, 
indigenous knowledge practice for food security and livelihoods. As you see, we've got a series of programs we are running at international level, training and seminars. A few words on the pilot development projects. We are financing this pilot development project, especially to transfer technology and to assist our member countries. Some of the areas where we have been transferring this type of technologies are solar, energy, farmyard, manual, agro-processing, establishment of laboratory for analyzing agricultural fertilizer, dairy development, etc. In fact, you know, development and transfer of technology is one of the core components of other development projects. We also arrange for deputation of experts from one member country to another member countries, from one continent to another continent. We've been uh, in the past delegating experts to impart training in technologically relevant areas like food processing, organic manual, analysis of agricultural chemicals, improved seeds, gem cuttings, jewelry making, fruit processing, and so on and so forth. The visits of experts to different member countries help in harnessing technologies that help in building rural entrepreneurship. The next slide gives you a summary of all the activities we've been carrying out over the past five years. You will see we are responding to the eight SDGs, eight very important SDGs in there to start uh, by citing only a few one, the No Poverty SDG 1, SDG 2. We've carried more than 50 activities on each of these two activity, two goals. And you see the number of candidates we are supporting and we are training and transferring knowledge and technology. I would like to share with the participants only a few selected model villages in our new member countries. This is, uh, uh, you will understand only a few, we've got a series of them. The first one is an element, a model called Sandesh Adesh Gram Yojana, which is promoted by the government of India with the key objective of preventing distress migration. That is preventing people to move from the rural areas to go to the urban areas where livelihood conditions are not always guaranteed. So this project aims at creating the env conducive environment and creating conditions for livelihood generations in the rural areas. And the key elements of this project and this model is they are sustainability of the model, community involvement, which is a must, technology, availability and connectivity in terms of physical connectivity, digital connectivity, financial connectivity, and power connectivity. This has been a very successful model and it's still ongoing. Another model comes from Bangladesh where we call it the comprehensive village development model which has been promoted by the Bangladesh Academy for Rural Development. Here also we see there is a comprehensive and aggregate view of developing uh, the rural communities. They have to promote an overall development of segments of the population in the village on the basis of self-effort and self-help by bringing everyone in that village into a cooperative. So they form what we call a cooperative village. They evolve and to evolve it in such a way that these are replicable models. These have been replicated in various other villages. And the key strategies and major components of the CVDP are listed in the next slide. I will just cite a few of them. It's organizing the villages in a broad-based village cooperative with a specific number of functional groups carrying different types of uh, functions within that cooperative. Then there is also training and motivation, which is constantly given. They, they are also guided into accumulating their own capital and investment, economic and self-employment activities, social development, village development plan also are there. And then there is constant monitoring on a monthly basis. This has ensure the success of these models. 
another model coming from a quite developed country, I mean, higher developed country now. At that time, they were implementing the Samuel Ondong that is coming from the South Korea. This slides gives you a guidance on the spirit within that Samuel Ondong village development. It's based on self-help again, diligence and cooperation. A sense of community for self-help is very strong and this is a key element of success there. A sense of ownership and responsibility coupled by the strong work ethics has given this model very good success in South Korea and it has also been promoted in Africa with the help of African Development Bank which has successfully implemented such or similar Samuel Dong project in Ethiopia and also in the Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo. Audio is trying to move forward by generating and creating more partnership for supporting and replication of models and supporting technological, institutional and policy changes. We have to trigger a lasting transformation of the rural economies to empower the rural population to improve their own productivity and real incomes in an equitable and environmentally sustainable manner. We are also going ahead uh, with the conception of a documentation center called Audiopedia, which is being conceived as a comprehensive repository to include Interalia, an affordable technology menu, successful models and policies and programs. We also want to highlight different strategies for the development using digital technologies. This gives you an idea of what we are conceiving as the Audiopedia. And I will invite all the partners and anyone willing to contribute to this Audiopedia, whether you're having a successful model, a successful program, or a successful policy, you're kindly invited to participate in there. Innovation and suggestions for the ideal village. I think the organization of rural stakeholders is very central to numerous agricultural and rural development efforts. This is the lesson we are learning from all our successful models. We really need innovative systems. Could we have a network of organization, enterprises and individuals focus on bringing new products, new processes, and new forms of organization into economic use together with the institutions and policies that affect the system's behavior and performance. This is a challenging task. We have to saddle ourselves with this. Innovations and suggestions for the ideal village, again, we need to efficiently use our goal of SDG goal 17, that is partnership at various level, at various international, regional level. We have to address systemic issues such as improving data generation and availability and use of open sources so that we can trigger down the benefits of successful model to many villages in the world. We have also to compare and reinforce the policy and institutional coherence. Many places we see that institutions are operating, but then there are no proper coherence between these institutions. We have to foster multi-stakeholder partnership and capacity building, promoting sustainable livelihood, development, peace and security in all the regions. There is also the dire need for proper budgeting and harmonization of comprehensive sustainable development plans and strategies at country and regional levels, targeting especially the two first SDGs, poverty and hunger eradication. I've just jotted down a few recommendations which can be taken of this conference. We have to review our systems and strategies, although many of our initiatives are successful, but we have to go in a big way this calls for a review of systems and strategies. 
I will also suggest that funds allocated to public research institutions ought to be focusing on developing low cost technologies, especially for health disease and countries in Asia and Africa and obviously in Latin America also. From our islands of success, we have to move into a continental one with a disruptive impact. We have to scale up. We have no time. The scaling up is an urgency. And we have to scale out through strengthening innovation capacity. New and traditional knowledge and innovation have also to be complemented by skills and training. Skills and training programs have also to be coherent with the technologies coming in. We have obviously to empower youth and women to drive inclusive transformation in rural areas and long-term food security and poverty eradication. Audu as an institution is ready to partner with other organizations and to assume a catalytic role towards supporting the technological, institutional, and policy changes required to assist in transforming our villages and improve livelihoods. We have to trigger the long-lasting transformation in the rural economy by effectively empowering the rural population to improve their productivity and real incomes in an equitable manner. What is needed from world leaders and leaders in different fields is an unprecedented level of cooperation in the formulation of a long-term international food strategy and guaranteed livelihood for one and all. We can together build up this type of livelihoods in our villages. Our perception of, a lively, of a, an idle village will be an inclusive, sustainable hub guaranteeing all the services elaborated in the slides, starting from institutional education, climate, ranging to markets, trade, insurance, banking, and credit. Thank you very much, my dear participants.